It's time to get your risk on. Hello everybody, thank you for watching my video. My name is Digitalic and I'm a Grandmaster Ranked Online Risk Player. And for you today, I have episode two of my Rank Up series, where I take my man Ranky McUpperton as far up the Grandmaster ranking as that we can go, playing in various settings, uh, in other people's lobbies, sometimes my own in this next series. Um, and we're gonna be playing uh, settings, various settings throughout the game. Uh, and today we're playing Classic Fixed again. Um, and as I said before, this might be a very, very long battle. It might be a never-ending battle, uh, because apparently the only way you can get anywhere near the top 100 is if you exclusively play Caps. And I'm not going to do that, because that's not good TV. Um, I have, maybe on my main account, I'll exclusively play Caps and not broadcast every game, because we're do want to I do want to make the top 100 for sure okay so let's talk about the settings for today's game let's notice that white has a premium frame so settings for today's game are world domination classic map auto setup six second turn timer expert AI uh, fixed cards balance blitz dice no novices no beginners uh, alliance is off fogs off blizzards are off and portals are also off and it's my turn so I do have a big presence in Africa. Um, but where do I get my take? Yeah, I look like I'm gonna go for the Africa play here. I'm gonna put all my troops here because I have two 3v1s I can roll. I got, I got one of them. Let's, let's fortify, I'm gonna fortify these two back and open up this road here and hopefully maybe I can migrate this down into Africa okay so who are we playing today we've got Jason Felmley playing as white in the first position in the second position we've got Ribby 07 I don't recognize that flag it looks kind of Middle Eastern if anyone knows that flag let me know I'm in the third position with my rank up account Ranky McUpperton currently ranked as a grandmaster in FFA with about 22,000 FFA points 23 wins and 20 losses so a nice winning record uh, in the fourth position we've got Margot Dew from the United States of America playing as black and in the fifth and final position today we've got Claire Savage 10 playing as blue looks like they're going to move into South America okay So Africa is definitely my play here. Uh, White wants Australia, and they've got a pretty good line on it. Yeah, they gotta they get, get a take, get some value out of their troops in Europe, and continue to build armies, readying to take over Australia. Okay. Purple doesn't seem to have really have a good line on a continent. They might... Oh, yeah. No, they've got a good stack. Oh, they try and spend in Australia and lose. And they, they do have a 10 stack in Europe, so perhaps that's where they're going to be headed. So I'm going to keep putting all my troops in Africa. I'm going to try and migrate this stack. Oh, lose a troop. Down towards Africa. Uh, do I want to keep that three there? Does anyone need out? Purple probably wants to get this in, but they can do that on the next turn. It's... Yeah. No, I'm going to leave the three there. Let's fortify this 13 down in. into the four and create a nice big army in Africa. UI scale is a little bit high on this map for my liking. I had it high because in some maps you really just got to beef it up. I'm just going to bring it down a bit. Uh, on this map with big UI, it just it seems a bit too cluttered for me. Okay, it looks like Black wants North America. They do have a lot of material to deal with. Do we roll a six on three? They do. Do they at least leave a pass? Oh, it's 
So they do an unnecessary attack to get some reinforcements in. That means they're going to have to block the way. So this is what uh, you just shouldn't really do this. You should at least let your players, your opponents, spend these troops uh, if you can by single stacking in South America. That's what I, I like. Some people say, screw it, it's only five troops. I'm just going to smash through them anyway. And I guess that's okay too. But for long run diplomacy, it's nice to show a little bit of good faith to your opponents. Okay, so white. Evacuates Europe. Put all my troops here. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a three v one because if I miss, I can always I can always punch this too. But I don't really want to put another tr troop here and then have purple punch it. So let's bring. No, we'll leave that two up there. Okay. Let's look at our card status now that we have three cards. We have the artillery trade. I'm going to use it. Hopefully bulls that, uh, bull, blue pulls that three in. I imagine that's what they're going to do. They didn't. They left the three in North Africa. Okay, so... Perhaps blue is one of those players that likes to take South America, but also sit in North Africa and in Central America, trying to stop their opponents from getting Africa and North America. Let's use the trade. Got a plus two in South Africa. Let's spend this if we can. We can. Ooh, wild card. Nice. So we're definitely going to have a trade on three. But hopefully it's the big trade. And not the dude trade. Alliances are off. That sucks. I prefer to play fixed with alliances on. So you at least have some means of communication with your opponents. Hopefully blue pulls that three out. Okay, they do. That's great. So I'm going to close the road off to South America now on my next turn. I'm not going to take Africa yet. you know what let's leave it up. let's not do that because who knows if I put that 34 stack in North Africa maybe blue will trade and you never know you're either one of those players that will just do something do something crazy so I'll keep that road open for now 
Okay, black moves all of their troops into North America, other than a three stack in my bonus. I'd love it if they spent that. So blue does trade. They finish South America. What do they reinforce here? Okay, so they put troops in Peru. So it's... Maybe it's time for me to take Africa and sit and put all my troops in the Congo. And not Congo, Egypt. And single point guard it there. Or threat guard it there. Remember, Africa's only a plus three. It's not the end of the world if someone breaks you. Plus with a threat guard, you'll have... A giant stack to answer back with. Okay, so white has a strong hold on on a on Australia now. I'll give black one more turn to spend that three. Sorry, purple. I am going to have to hit. You were two stack. Definitely going to slider blitz here because I don't want to lose all my troops, even though it's extremely unlikely. Lose a troop, not a big deal. Just kind of do that, give him a bit of the business here. And now do I have a big trade? I do, but I don't need to use it. Awesome. So Black got the message, spent the troop. Now, I'm going to need blue to start reinforcing this four stack out here in Asia, because I don't want them to lose it. At least for now. Uh, because that might force them to start taking cards off me, especially if black is strong over here. Um, and black pushes them back down, and which they might do on their next turn. Looks like blue might lose that stack now. Yeah, blue should... I, if I was blue, I would put all my reinforcements. And if I have a trade, I'd actually put most of my trade on there too. And attack away from... Attack north. use my trade quite yet actually let's do it it's a big trade let's just use it got a plus two in Japan okay that's cool Blue sets in, gets the big trade, 10 troops. I imagine that's all going into North America. I mean, they could they could break me from the Middle East, but I don't see the, uh, that seems just kind of pointless. Hopefully, hopefully blue gets the message here and they reinforce that four in Asia. I think it's critical for their long-term game. 
to make that stack expensive to hit and use it to get cards. Well, at least put one there. So it's... They attack up? Yeah. Okay. But still, a savvy player like purple. Okay, and look, blue's showing me some good graces by moving... moving demilitarizing the border somewhat. A savvy player like white or purple can just take out those positions of blues in Asia and force them to have to get cards on through me or North America. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. But we'll see. Turns easy, take a card and pass. There's nothing really else to do here. No one looking extremely weak right now. Everyone's seen this game seems to be stabilizing and moving into the mid game quite quickly. <coughs> Black spending a lot of time in draft. What's that all about? Okay, they're still here. Slow claim to North America. So blue is reinforcing this position, but I just, I think they need to put more there. And they continue to further demilitarize this border. Fantastic. And see, look. White did it. So now... And that's a good, that's a great move. Because uh, now blue has to get cards up here. Uh, or into me, right? Slaughter blitz this. I think I split my armies here. blue taking cards off of me. Might be Blue's final card. You never know.
Okay, purple takes Europe and threat guards it from Northern Europe. Black finishes North America. I imagine they're going to reinforce Central America. No, they don't. Okay. So, Blue's going to play the no-card game. And this game is stabilized. All of my opponents have a continent. I don't have the best continent, but I don't have the worst continent. Let's check my trade status. Sure. You know what? Let's just use that. Now, I never want to attack this territory. Uh, not to say that white would actually, if I open them up, they actually will attack me. But uh, this, these two, these two here provide me a nice cushion from an attack from white. Got a good neighbor game going on here. I'm actually currently the strongest player. Now, if blue bots out, that'll be an issue for me. Or potentially black, because the bot will definitely fortify this army into one of these borders. So... Looks like purple wants to trade cards with me. I'm fine with trade status. No trade. Australia player white is starting to gum up Asia so they're they're going to be doing an expansion play there we'll see how that works out for them maybe that's the key to progressing this game is, is that play
my Sprite's empty. That sucks because I'm thirsty. Okay, so we're in a very stable mid-game here. Good neighbors. No one making any moves. The only real move here is white expanding out of... into Asia from, from the Australia position. My trade status, 10. Why not? Got a 69 stack? If I had the dab... I would probably dab. Maybe we see some tension here boil over. Blue player continuing to build armies in South America without cards. Oh. Is Black trying to card block me? Okay. This is interesting. That, that was an interesting reaction. So purple didn't take a card. They, they smashed their troops into black. Interesting play. How does that get resolved? Okay, so we've got our first war, and I am not involved, at least not yet. Yeah, this is going to boil over. Well, it already has boiled over. I wonder if blue reinforces north here. No. I think maybe it's time for me to combine these stacks. I don't care if blue, blue breaks me at this point because something's about to go down here. Okay. So I get to kill purple and black for free. And take five cards. I'll take that. And I think I evacuate. And I think I take North America.
Attack my territory if you need to. <coughs> I don't expect white to let me hold all of this. my 46. Pull back into Australia. No, we're not going to do that today. White only has two cards, only has a nine stack here. Blue is closed. Forced into the dude trade, okay. Blue's of quite a passive player. If I was blue, I would have at least moved down to Africa. I'd, I might even let them hold both at this time. I don't know. I'm just going to hold my position.
just gonna get white below 18. Okay. All right. This could be a long one. Artillery trade. Sixty nine. Oh, I wanted two sixty nine stacks. Blue finishes Africa. Very balanced game here. White coming in with the 10 trade. Okay, so Blue militarizes this border. I wonder if they made a mistake and they meant to go back to here, but went to here by accident. You never know. There's no alliances, so they can't communicate with each other. Stack. 
at least show them, you know. I mean, if their plan was to hit that 26, they were going to hit, they're going to still going to hit an eight. But at least I have the opportunity to reduce the number of troops they would have hit. Plus, I can show them uh, some camaraderie. Now, got to be ready. If one of my opponent's bots out, A, they might be... Oh, here we go. Okay, so I like this. I showed blue some camaraderie, and then white breaks them. That's good for me. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start making a bigger army. Yeah, if one of my opponent's bots out, if they're doing the scumbag bot out strategy, it'll probably work. Uh, because it's, the way I see it is, most of the time, when an opponent bots out, they're not doing it. So, if I can win the game by killing the other, the last remaining human player, and then easily defeating a, a big bot, um, I'll do that. If every eighth time or whatever it is, I don't even know what it is, uh, we get... Um, we get someone doing the scumbag bot up strategy and I come second. Good for them. Okay, so blue didn't retake. What's white doing here? Okay. okay, do we want Western Australia or do we want to hold Ontario? We definitely want to hold Ontario. So blue attacks twice, but still has all of their armies buried in South America, in Brazil. This could be a very long fixed game. Okay, Blue says, I want Africa back. And guards it somewhat. Does white break them anyway? They do. So white and blue are not friends. And I think I'm friendly with blue. I did card block them earlier, but that's a standard play. 
and they seem to know that. Okay, we're getting around the territory where I'm gonna have to start blocking myself, but hey, at least it gives me more, more troops. Trade. Yeah, we'll hold on to it. Bring that 154 out, Blue. Yeah, okay. So Blue's threat guarding now. Break me again and see what happens. Because White can only break... White can only break Blue by opening up that massive army. Still not going to use it. Let's hope we get a dude, get a big trade, get some some value out of this. White's trying to get me to lock my army. I will do so, but I'll unlock it here. Lock it there. Boop boop boo. <laughs> okay. Stuff is happening here. Blue's on the move. That could be for me. You never know, right? That could be for me. White's opening me up. Okay, White's gonna break both of us from the back. Roll 11 on 8 too. Probably gonna sit a stack in my bonus. No, they back down. Okay, I have to use, oh, I didn't look at the cards. No big deal. Stacks are open, so I can just retake my bonus here. And I'm not even going to guard it. Does blue pump all of this into white? I don't think they're going to. Still online. No, they retake. Punch in Europe. Oh, here we go. They are. They are. They're going to kill White. I get first place. Game over. Maybe they're not. Split. Yeah, good game. I 
I'm going to kill white first because blue is a good ally. game all right under an hour class fix game we're starting to stalemate but I won because I played nice with blue and white made that mistake of aggressing blue when they just didn't have the relative troop power to bully blue and blue decided I'm done with this game uh, and I'm going to kill one of you. And they tried to kill white, and they pretty much killed them, but ran out of time. So, in the true spirit of alliances, I killed white first and got another win. So we're at 24 wins, 20 losses with Ranky McUpperton. I think white is a master. Yeah, I'm going to give white master. I'm going to give blue uh, expert. Blue was a master. White was an expert. Okay, white. I, you know, other than that, what White's moves at the end, I, I thought White played pretty well. I thought their move taking Blue out of Asia was a solid play, um, and I, you know, and I felt the mechanics of the game were pretty good. So I'm surprised. I thought they I really thought they were a master. Anyway, let's go look at the ranking. Twenty-two nine five nine. That won't get us anywhere near the top uh, one hundred. Uh, but we're creeping on the top 1,000. Uh, I don't think we're there yet. No, plus 99. But top 1,000, I think, is around 29,000 FFA points. So we're creeping up there. Uh, 24 wins, 20 losses. Two 1v1 wins, two 1v1 losses. As I said before, I am going to be probably putting out a weekly 1v1 series. If for people, I know most people don't like one, watching 1v1s, but some people might, you, if you want. Once a week, you'll probably be able to watch me play uh, four or five games in a single video. Uh, and those are interesting. I'm not the greatest at 1v1s. I've, I'm not one of the people from before the update who would noob, did noob grinding. So I don't have like a crazy 1,500 wins to 100 loss record. Um, but yeah. So anyway, so that's the end of the video, guys. Really appreciate you watching it. If you don't mind, smash that like button. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. Um, and you and I can get better at this game together. So until I see you next time, you keep fighting that good fight.